Oh. Yeah, that, thank you, there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, no, he's clipped my skin part of it. Yeah, um, thank you for organizing this thing. And then you know, I almost ended up missing this. I'm glad I didn't because the first two talks were like fantastic. I truly enjoyed it from the heart. Very nice. Um, so I'm a faculty at IIT Madras. And uh, I'm the director of this uh, Healthcare Technology Innovation Center, which is what we'll be talking about today. And my background was I am an uh, instrumentation, electrical, electronics person by training. And uh, I did ad advanced medical devices, very advanced, I should say, which is uh, built the world's first retinal implant in the US for about eight, nine years, eight years, uh, 2001 to 2008. Then decided to come back. Um, in late 2008, then I joined IIT Madras as a faculty. And uh, why I came back, not just because Lehman Brothers fell, which was about two, three weeks before I came back. Um, it was a sea change. You could sense the change. Uh, the center of gravity was shifting. And after doing this very advanced medical devices, you take a trip to India, you get a completely different perspective, saying that all you would have had is just, if you had a simple eye checkup, you would have saved a vision. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so that was sort of the motivation, came back. Now the first thing you realize when you, you come back and you want to do this med tech in a, in a meaningful way, not just as research as uh, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor was saying, is you realize we don't have the university system. We have many universities, but we don't have the university system, which has the law school, med school, business school, engineering school, everybody together. And that's a huge gap. I mean, uh, people from UK may not realize this, but the moment you don't have that in the single campus, the way you set up an innovation center is very different now. If you still want to make meaningful innovation that connects all these things and still create wealth in addition to health for the businesses. So took about a year, year and a half. We started forming an ecosystem, anchor at IIT Madras. Somebody has to anchor it. That's the first thing. So uh, the difference between a, a research lab and uh, an innovation center is, well, the research lab is countered by publications and graduation. The innovation center is countered by the impact, or at least it should be, as I see it. So you have to bring in clinicians, you have to bring in industry, you have to bring in government. Right? You can't get away from the government on this one, not just for funding alone, but if you want to do anything with public sector, like public health care sector, you need the government on the board. Now, for people who have tried this, you know what this means. I mean, this is like, uh, I used to have a reptile almost here. Uh, at least that's what I tried to say. Uh, it was a lot of work. But in 2009, towards the end of 2009, we had pulled it off. We pulled off uh, ecosystem before we applied for funding. So again, that was another good call. We didn't start the center, then look for these things. That Then you lose time. Then a DVT came into the picture. And we didn't get cut off. That would be like the worst thing. You will use it again. Uh, then DBT came in and then said, well, if you're going to do this, let's not again do this in a, in a fragmented way. You, you do individual projects and then look for industry later. Things don't work. Why don't we set up the center itself as an entity? So today, this is an entity. But it's set up in a very, very efficient manner that it is attached to IIT Madras. Right? But it is an entity by itself. The large governance is through IIT Madras, but I, as the executive head of the center, have complete freedom. There's a board. IIT Madras has representation on the board. DVT has representation on the board. So there is soft, large governance, hard execution inside the center. So that's how it is set up, because that's important, because you will see the work that happens happens because of the structure of the center. So well, this everybody knows about it, but I want to put this in a context um, especially for businesses that are looking for opportunities in India. So that's the problem and opportunity of India, right? where we had infectious diseases as a big burden. We thought we had one over it. And now you're seeing NCDs is a huge problem. Just to give you a perspective, today the budget allocation for a district for cancer is about one crore. That, that's all you have for a from my allocation. So this, uh, in fact, you might have seen the last two years, there's a huge uh, wave that's coming up saying that cancer funding has to be increased. So that's just one example. Well, the accessibility problem is well known. Right? And this number is quite conservative if you really look at it. I mean, it's, it's, it's still way off, but that's a citable number and quotable number I've quoted. 
If you take specialists, it's much worse. It's easily one is to 10,000, one is to 100,000. It gets really worse. And affordability, even though everybody knows about it, it actually is also doing, people can't afford it to start with. It's also making people unaffordable by actually getting healthcare. And this you will see if you go outside a very large hospital. Right? I mean, I will not name anything taking going on. Uh, the guy will come with a sleeper class ticket, get his cardiac bypass done, he is out of the hospital. The bypass is done, but he doesn't have a return ticket back home. Right. But he's fit. Right. I mean, you can see this in, uh, in Chennai. You can get take the hospital. But they're doing fantastic work, but somebody has to pay for it. So this is true. I was shocked. I said, 30 plus million. This cannot be true. And I read it, read more. Then I was like, ah, it's just 3% of the population. So that, then it is sobering. I said. So that's the problem and challenge of India. And where technology plays a role here, or rather, should technology play a role? I mean, just to let you know this, I can put on the record. I'm actually not necessarily a, a technophile, right? even though I'm a technology. I always try to wonder that, is this thing really making a difference or not? Many times I start to wonder that. So, but if you look at it, two things about technology which has actually worked. First is, if it is framed correctly, it is very reliable. Right? That's why we still use it. Two, it is scalable. Right? Classic example in, uh, India is a mobile technology, and you can see that. So, but if you want to do technology innovations in this area, it has to be context specific. There's no other way. You cannot do this the solution problem way. It's impossible in healthcare. In fact, I'm yet to see anybody come up with something in technology which somehow had a, a great problem to find. And it's getting harder and harder. You can see why, because information is already available out there. So if you didn't catch it early, the chances that you were right and you didn't know about it is very small. So three things have to uh, be satisfied. First is it has to be affordable. If it's not affordable, you just forget it. There's nothing actually you can do about it. And it's not just a rhetoric. People who run businesses know this. There is simply no way. Right? I mean, running a business in India is not easy. Right? It is very difficult. Credit. Everything is tough. So if you can't make it sustainable and affordable, right, you're not going to have a business. Second problem in healthcare, people know about the geography problem. This is much well-known, people can't access it. Mm. Now, other problem, which is a subtle accessibility problem, some people call it availability. So, I am still struggling where to put it, but uh, some of the definitions say skill can still be called accessible. Is you reach, but you still don't have a doctor, or you don't have access to a doctor. And this happens both in specialists as well as primary care, more so in specialists. Even today, if you look at it, a cataract surgery is, a high quality cataract surgery is 3,000 rupees. If you want an expensive lens, it's 30,000 rupees, but I'm told there's no difference. When I have cataract, I'm going to get the 3,000 one. Um, but in a place like Tamil Nadu, which has one of the best primary and tertiary care, there is a cataract surgery backlog of 50%. Right? And it has not, not just to do with geography. And people who have been in Tamil Nadu, you'll realize that it's very well connected. In fact, one of the best connected state. Problem is with enough people to do this. So that's the second problem. Third, let's say you create a solution that's affordable. Right. Not by subsidy, but by a viable business, uh, and it is accessible, it has to be scalable. Right. It has to be really scalable, else you will not create the impact and you will not have that business continue for a long time. So, these were, the, of course, uh, it's like winning and giving you the strategy. So, I'm sort of being retrospective on this one, but we got both of, most of these things right when we started this. And uh, for the business people out there, that's the market. Uh, that's about uh, four billion dollars when dollar was fifty. So I don't know what it is today. Mm -hmm. um, it's growing at fifteen twenty percent because if you really look at it, uh, healthcare is one of the fastest growing sectors, and it continues to grow. There's no other way. Demand is there. Um, just one thing you know, people should make note of this is the medtech and the capital equipment is still a very small portion of the overall healthcare spending or healthcare market. <laughs> I should say the overall healthcare market is somewhere around ninety billion. Again, fifty dollars, fifty rupees per dollar. Um, it's about five to seven percent, not more than that. But because it is capital equipment, it influences behavior big time. Right? It influences behavior, it influences the operating model, it influences the for example, if you put a fundus camera or if you put a slit lamp, the way you actually run your clinic is very different. Right? So that way the capital equipment actually has a huge role in the health system behavior itself. Now in terms of innovation, 
these two things are the key. First is, uh, well, one point is missing, I don't know how it happened. Uh, even today we import about 80 to 85 percent and in some cases 100 percent. Right? So the medtech market and uh, medtech uh, home market in India, industry I should say, is very, very nascent. It's very, very, very nascent. I mean, I mean 10 years ago it was even worse. Today we have about 5 to 10 companies. The largest domestic company is probably still doing, I would say, about a couple of hundred crores, right? um, a few tens of millions, I would say. So still a huge <coughs> room to grow there. And even uh, MNCs like uh, GE Healthcare, Philips, uh, j and and uh, the big guys in BD, um, they have so far not done very India-centric R&D. When I say India-centric R&D, I am not talking about just in terms of reducing the prices because you know that it doesn't work after a while. Right? It was set up and as I was saying that it's set up as an entity. It is actually in IIT Madras research park which is the country's uh, at this point of time first and only research park that is connected in academia. And so that IIT Madras research park 20 feet away from is IIT Madras. It's a very unique structure uh, which allows faculty, students, industry to get together. So this is a research park. It's completely full today, 400,000 square feet. It has R&D centers like us. Uh, start, uh, startup companies, incubators, R&D units of large companies, R&D centers of government. So it's a very unique, uh, vibrant ecosystem. And uh, I want to talk about the funding because what people perhaps may not uh, be aware is research funding and innovation funding in India is at actually today almost at international levels. Right? And what people may not uh, know is our salaries, faculty salaries don't come from uh, research funding. So really look at it, the leverage is actually very high. Right? So that, and the best part about this center, which I, I personally see it uh, from a business point of view, is the operational um, money is about 30 percent is contributed by industry today. So they see huge value in what we are doing and actually there has been a lot of business successes already. So before I go on to the, the, the video summary, uh, I will just uh, sort of tell you a couple of people are missing here. GA Healthcare is uh, missing, they will join us by the end of this week. Um, is if you want to pull this off and create impact in health and make businesses viable, um, it's available on the web. You'll get a nice picture. Um, you have to have this ecosystem right? because it's a very nascent market and a sector and an industry today. So a traditional research way of I will do this, five years later something somebody will pick it up, it never happens. It has not happened earlier. It's very unlikely to happen because the life cycles of uh, healthcare technology itself is less than a decade these days. So you can do the math. You do something comes after five years. I mean, no company can sustain a life cycle of three to four years on a product. So this has become sort of the um, proud and in one way sort of sad to say it's become the leading medtech innovation hub in the country. Ideally, it should be many more. Right. And that's where I think India will go over the next five, six years. And uh, so that's what they are and you'll have a, a wide range of companies starting from a century old giant like BD uh, all the way to a, a dynamic startup like Forest which is four years old actually it's in Bangalore. Uh, with that, let me just, uh, because I realized going through individual projects is one of the most boring things. Uh, maybe not for you, but definitely for me. So I've realized <laughs> the better thing that was... Healthcare Technology Innovation Center, HTIC, is a joint initiative of IIT Madras and Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Started with the objective of developing technologies for unmet healthcare needs in the country. HTIC anchors a vibrant and fertile innovation ecosystem consisting of IIT Madras, various medical institutions, industry partners and government agencies necessary for developing high-impact healthcare technologies. HTIC is strategically located at IIT Madras Research Park, the country's first university research park that houses R&D units of leading private and public organizations. HTIC develops technologies for unmet healthcare needs in collaboration with clinicians, 
and successfully deploys these technologies to the society through strong partnerships with industry and government. HDIC's technologies are reaching the field, touching lives, benefiting society. The mobile eye surgical unit, the first of its kind technology in the country developed in HDIC, targets the huge unaddressed need for cataract surgeries in rural India. The pilot phase completed 486 surgeries with no post-operative complications. This success led to government approval of this technology as a delivery model for cataract surgeries. An independent assessment report by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, analyzed the technology's cost-effectiveness and efficiency and found it to be ready for scaling up. HDIC has developed IPAC, a computing technology for extracting clinically relevant information from eye images. The processing, computing and analytics modules of IPAC can be used to develop a range of applications in ophthalmology. The first success of IPAC came through partnership with Forest Health, a young Indian medtech company that developed Trinetra, a multifunctional ophthalmic screening device. The computational intelligence capabilities of IPAC have helped Trinetra reach more than 100 locations in eight different countries. Collaboration with an uh, organization like HTSC, which has you know, world-class competency in terms of building uh, these computational platforms, has actually taken this product today as we speak in India and also across the world. Concept to market was in a record time of a year quite economical also. IIT is doing it with the best resources, with the best minds. It is reaching the larger population. A novel image-free technology for measuring arterial stiffness for cardiovascular screening was developed in HDIC. The ArtSense technology overcomes limitations of existing imaging systems such as cost, expertise required and time taken for performing stiffness measurement. To evaluate stiffness using ArtSense, the operator places the probe on the subject's neck. The system automatically identifies arterial anatomy, tracks wall motion and gives an estimate of stiffness within 10 to 20 seconds. The technology was validated in three leading institutions in Chennai, paving the way for highly affordable technology for vascular health screening that can be used with minimal training. It's much more easier to use, much more easier to interpret and much more easier to train people on this and much more easier to deploy across the country. With this device, the cost will come down at least a hundredfold and that's what it will boil down to. Translational research and development of this kind that has an immediate significant impact on the lives of the people is one of the many objectives of IIT Madras. These things don't happen in a vacuum. You need to have the, the ambience which you have with the IIT Madras. You need to have the ambience of interacting within the city with medical practitioners of various kinds. HDIC has many more technologies in the pipeline at various stages of development to deployment. A highly practical and cost-effective solution for continuous monitoring of intensive care unit was developed in collaboration with SASCHEM and is currently being piloted at Mehta's Hospital in Chennai. HTIC is working with Phoenix Medical Systems to develop affordable technical advances in thermal and mechanical functionality of neonatal transport incubators. In collaboration with Tata LXC, a smartphone-based pulse oximetry technology that provides clinically accurate blood oxygen saturation levels is under development. HDIC is innovating novel blood collection devices that deliver benefits of closed collection while alleviating the skill barrier in collaboration with Beckton Dickinson.
an ophthalmic anesthesia simulation tool that allows real-time training and skills assessment is being developed with inputs from ophthalmologists and anesthetists. In addition, an ocular compression device that overcomes limitation of existing methods was developed and successfully validated in surgical setting. A diabetic retinopathy screening solution with extensive validation on population level data set is under development using HDIC's proprietary IPAC technology. HDIC is driven by a continuously growing passionate team of highly dynamic and talented engineers, researchers, IITM faculty and students. What is particularly thrilling is the level of enthusiasm and you know, can-do attitude which is apparent in the environment. You need to have a set of people in the leadership of the organization who have the passion to take the team forward constantly. You know, in Mohan, you have that, you have that in IIT Madras with you know, Ashok Jinjimbala, with Anand who was the previous director, with Bhaskar Ramurthy now. And, and this, you know, buy-in by the leadership is very, very important. With its strong ecosystem, dynamic and passionate team, capability to navigate complexity of innovation to deliver practical solutions, HDIC is creating impact and is on its way to becoming a leader in affordable healthcare technology. So what I will do is, I will leave this with the summary, the self-explanatory and I'll take questions. I'm gonna I missed a couple of points, but I think it'll come through in the discussion. But if it doesn't. So, any questions left? Uh, we're coming up with lots of new innovations, and we're also getting to the market. How's the IP being managed? And so, so, we have engaged with the industry in a practical manner, in the sense, whatever needs to be done. So, we don't have a rigid... Uh, policy because that will just kill this whole thing. Yeah. So there have been situations where uh, we own the technology but we have developed solution for the company. Uh, there are situations where we are jointly developed, uh, the one which we are doing for the neonatal monitoring, it's a joint development. And uh, the model for example, the AdSense which is actually completely developed by us will eventually be transferred to a company. Right. We have done all the three, we are doing all the three actually. It has to be practical. Right? Yep. I mean, so that's uh, the thing. Another I want to link, uh, emphasize here is, in a situation like India, where industry has many other challenges, uh, centers like this have to go the additional mile. We have to. It's not just in a patronizing way. You have to do this because only then this is going to go far. Mm. Right? And somehow the culture has been set up well in that manner. So today. I mean, we have started work with the industry almost like one day or even a week of meeting. It has happened. It continues to happen. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Off to a great start there. I mean, you've got a, uh, a nice little stable of products. What about your innovation pipeline? I mean, it, it, it's fascinating. This is the, the, f the first research center established on a university campus as well, which, which is a bit scary, really. Um, well, in a, in, a, in a way that it is set up, I would say. Yeah. There have been research labs. So. Yeah. And you've got some great go-to-market partners there with some heavyweight industry to, for the, the, the downstream sort of commercialization. But, but are you fishing in a small pool? Say again, sir? Are, are you fishing in a small pool? How? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, so there is a pipeline. Mm -hmm. Many of the things, obviously, it's not uh, out mm -hmm. there on the, the web right now. Uh, they, the way actually to do this is to walk back, right, where what are the largest disease burdens in India today? Cardiovascular, diabetes, cancer, uh, uh, kidney. So actually that's uh, not a well-mentioned thing. So dialysis has become a huge problem. So th this is out there. And then you also have technology fertile areas like ophthalmology. Right? Even though it may not appear as big as uh, other areas, it's, it's very technology fertile. So that's the larger pool. 
and there are many things that are happening. And again, if you are too prescriptive and you start with, okay, I am going to make the cheapest angiogram, well, it will stay as cheap as it is, it will never sell. So, we have to be very careful in this thing because it has happened before often too. People are very prescriptive and said, I'm going to do this, this and this and suddenly their entire dynamics change. So, I completely agree with Shantanu who just left uh, uh, up, where you cannot have this 100 percent prescription. You will have to sort of get in and then engage with people. Right? Again, clinical research in India in a, in, a, in a truly clinical way, actually it's very, very weak because of the uh, positive uh, enough skilled force even to deliver healthcare. So, we only have 500,000 doctors. So, clinical research in India is not very strong, which actually UK is extremely strong. So, this is one of the things which I have been talking to uh, people from UK. So, uh, just for um, uh, reporting, that we have been uh, having very strategic dialogue with UK over the last six to eight months. So, the Deputy High Commissioner Nithavir Anakas is the one who has been sort of pushing this. And just two weeks ago, we had Lord Kaker uh, was visiting here, Mr. Shiaizi, and I think he is going to move certain things uh, with the Healthcare UK initiative. So things are actually almost at the, the pivotal moment, I would say. So we may actually jump off at any time. So this is very opportune. So I thank all of you for putting this thing together. I can still take lessons. Did the two points you had come out? Say again. Did the two points you had? Come oh well, out? yeah. One of the things, yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is. The, one of the ripe areas, uh, ripe dimensions of innovation that India can give you is innovations that actually target skill barrier. <coughs> right. For example, take that uh, forest innovation. Right. You don't have to dilate. Right. It's a non-dilated uh, fungus camera. Right. But making devices like that is actually much more harder because if you don't dilate, your image quality is obviously going to be less. Now, you need more computational intelligence. So, it actually is counterintuitive from an engineering standpoint. So, making, uh, if you take a, a normal fundus camera, it doesn't have any computational intelligence because it's here in the ophthalmologist's head. Right. So, now, if you want to make affordable and accessible from a skill point of your devices, actually, you need more innovation. Right. So, that, is, that was one of the things I was about to mention. That's, that's a very important point. Right. I missed that. I missed that during the Any other questions? Yeah. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Satish. I'm again from uh, Nationwide. Uh, one of the questions I had was uh, uh, usually innovation tends to be uh, linked with glamorous innovations, and especially uh, in healthcare, uh, we talk about the the robotics and the high end thing. But uh, in India, what we need is uh, innovations which touch uh, simple and basic things. Uh, so, uh, any work that's happening on uh, uh, related to the infant ma ma infant and maternal mortality rate. And uh, since I have graduated for the last two decades, I have been hearing of the doctor's uh, shortage. So, what are your thoughts on how technology can play a role in these two, three areas? So, I'll, I'll answer the infant mortality. Yeah. It's actually one of the hardest areas to innovate from technology standpoint. Because if you really look at it, all you have is just this much. I mean, that's the, that's the, the fetus or the baby. And how do you do it? Like, there, you really need skills. The way people are targeting is actually quality of care and at an early stage. So better scans, hopefully scans, not scans, that is what is happening today. And uh, monitoring of neonates, like one of the areas that uh, it's an, un, uh, it's an un, uh, uh, unbroken challenge today is anemia. Right. So there's a couple of companies working, there's a company called Biosense in Bombay. I'm not sure where they are at this point of time in terms of validation. Anemia detection is one of the biggest gaps. In fact, in maternal childhood, it's put out as a grand challenge. If you can do non-invasive anemia and follow it up, it's a major one. The doctor's number challenge, it can't be a direct. So any product which you sell as, okay, this is going to replace doctors, you had it. You had it right there before it comes. The way to do is what we're mentioning, using a multiplying factor. How can multiplication happen if you do early screen? Right. Multiplication can happen only if you lower the skill barrier that is required to do the early screen. Right. So if you screen 1 lakh people and you know that 80-20 rule always apply, 
you only need 20% of them to actually go to the next level. I'm talking about from a specialist point, from an ophthalmology kind of point. Primary care is actually a different situation where all one lakh people probably need to be treated on a demand basis. Right? But for specialist shortage, the problem is, uh, the solution is always early screening. Right? Early screening uh, in 80-20 way. And whatever can be done has to be done. That's where technology can play a larger role. So you saw that. That's that's the way the eye pack has developed and it has gone into uh, an eye examination device, which can be used by anybody. I got trained on it in 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm Dr. Daya Prasad from Doctors for Seva. We have presence in a lot of rural and uh, villages and taluk levels and I'm just coming back from Uttarkashi where the entire district has one gynecologist. Um, so um, having said that, and you are talking about scaling and reaching out to places where there are n no specialists or skilled resources, but um, unfortunately most of these innovations or technology which is there end up staying in cities and don't actually reach out to the places where they're meant to be. There. So, what is your uh, answer so, to that? That was addressed by Shantanu. So, that's why the roof stream is actually very nicely done. So, the delivery model by itself needs innovation. So, I, I don't want to talk much about the company, which is actually Forest. The way they have done this, I would say they have innovated more in the delivery model side. And they, that's why they are able to reach out. So, which is by itself a worthy research, which I don't see many people actually do. It is much harder. Right? Because it's, it requires a systematic uh, way of thinking when there are no systems in place. Right? And so it's, it's a, one of the most hardest problem. Delivery model innovation is, a, is the same uh, problem in business. And business model innovation is actually much harder. Right? Because then you have to completely rethink what you do and whether you should do it or how you do it. And then the whole matrix needs to be upside down many times. And then you have to make business out of it. So. That is why it's important to continuously link with people. So these innovations, if you do it in a completely ad hoc manner, an isolated manner, it will go nowhere. So the government and uh, business needs to be constantly in the loop and preferably have a stake right there while you're beginning with so that they will give you the, not only just give you the right input, they'll make sure it goes all the way because they also have stake in it. I just wanted to make the comment, I missed the last question. I should answer to Dr. Shorten is, is shift. Shift the task for the doctors, uh, what the doctors are doing, uh, where we can have a, somebody like a nurse or an Ayush doctor, and there comes technology. For example, if I put a telemedicine uh, thing and somebody is putting the stethoscope as taking the diagnosis, and then you know, answer can't be. I mean, there are certain group of people say uh, one day doctors will be replaced with all the technology. I don't think that's uh, uh, we don't see that happening, you know, in the real life, but. Uh, what is the task shifting is the way to go because it will be very, very difficult for a, the moment you become highly qualified, your incentive to stay in the rural area is gone and you are so sought after, you will be coming, you know. It's very simple like as a, as a highly qualified physician after I finish my day, I want to go to McDonald's and take my child to and my child needs to go to good school. So unless you change the infrastructure of the whole country, it's not going to change. So task shifting is the answer along with technology. Tasha, I learned something. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.